Good day, kids. Science is like a magical world full of exciting surprises. In this lesson, you will witness the astonishing experiments that reveal the hidden secrets of chemical changes. In this lesson, you will, first, identify signs of chemical change in materials, second, describe the changes in the properties of materials when exposed to certain temperatures, third, enumerate harmful waste handling practices and lastly, demonstrate ways to minimize harmful changes in materials. Kids, what do you think will happen when you mix iodine solution and vitamin C? After completing our experiment, review your answer if it is correct. These are the materials we'll need for experiment number one. Here are the procedures. 1. Using a mortar and pestle, crush 1 to 2 tablets of vitamin C. Put the crushed powder in the first cup. 2. Add 10 drops of iodine solution to the other cup. 3. Add 3 spoons of water to each cup. Using a spoon, mix the materials to dissolve the substances. 4. Carefully pour the contents of one container into the other. Observe what happens. 5. Note the changes that happen in the substances. Answer the guide questions in your notebook. A chemical change happens when a material changes in composition and produces one or more new materials that are different from the materials before the change. What kind of change happened in our experiment? Can you still see the black and brownish color of the iodine solution? Correct, the change that occurred in the experiment is an example of a chemical change. Vitamin C when combined with the iodine solution, changes the chemical composition of iodine. That is why it became colorless. Examples of chemical changes All chemical changes happen because of chemical reactions. Below are some useful chemical changes. 1. Ripening of fruit. A chemical change occurs as a fruit matures and becomes sweeter, softer, and more flavorful. It involves complex chemical reactions. These transformations are responsible for the fruit's changing taste, texture, and color. 2. Baking a cake. When we mix flour, eggs, and sugar and then bake them, they undergo a chemical change. The cake is the product of the mixed ingredients. 3. Burning fuels, when gasoline is burned, it undergoes a chemical reaction called combustion, which turns into carbon dioxide and water vapor. During combustion, a lot of energy is released. This energy is what makes the engines of vehicles works, enabling cars, buses, and motorcycles to run. 4. Photosynthesis this is a chemical process that takes place in plants as the sunlight transforms carbon dioxide and water into sugar and oxygen. It forms the food for plant growth and produces oxygen, which is important for sustaining life on our planet. Signs of Chemical Change Signs of chemical change show that a substance has undergone transformation. Here are some common signs that a chemical change has taken place. 1. Change in color. The object or substances may change in color after a chemical change has happened. For example, when iron is combined with oxygen, it forms a new material called iron oxide or rust, which has a reddish-brown color. Change in color. 2. Formation of gas, bubbles indicate the production of gas, 
a sign of a chemical change. For instance, when baking soda and vinegar are mixed, carbon dioxide gas, in the form of bubbles, is produced. 3. Change in temperature. Chemical reactions can either absorb heat or release heat. The reaction of baking soda and vinegar also releases heat, causing the temperature of the mixture to increase. 4. Formation of a precipitate. A precipitate is a solid substance that forms when you mix two liquids. When you see this after combining solutions, it means a chemical change has happened. 5. Change in smell. The smell or odor of a substance can change during a chemical reaction. For example, the smell of food cooking is due to chemical changes happening in the ingredients as they mix and react with each other. 6. Change in taste. If you eat something that tastes different after cooking, baking, or ripening, it is a sign of a chemical change. For example, fruits such as sugar apple, sarsop, cotton fruit, and hairy lychee taste sweeter and tastier when they are fully ripe. 7. Release of light. Some chemical reactions release light. For example, the burning of a candle is a chemical reaction that gives off both heat and light. It is a great example of a chemical change that produces visible effect. In summary, a chemical change takes place when 1. One or more new substances are formed, 2. The change is usually not easy to reverse, 3. Energy is produced or taken in. Activity number one, identify the pictures that show materials that undergo chemical changes. Let's begin with experiment number two, but first, let's review our safety precautions. Put on your safety goggles to protect your eyes. Always have an adult supervision when using fire. These are the materials we'll need for experiment number two. Here are the procedures. 1. The teacher will burn three matchsticks. Two. Observe the matchsticks before and after burning. 3. Read each question carefully and answer it using your prior knowledge and observations. Write your answers in your notebook. Answer the guide questions in your notebook. Changes in properties due to temperature. 1. Burning materials. One of the most remarkable changes happen when certain materials are burned. For example, when you burn wood or coal, ashes and gases are formed. These newly formed materials are very different from wood or coal. The transformation into ashes and gases is called combustion which is an irreversible chemical change. Once wood or coal has turned into ashes and gases, we cannot turn it back into its original form. To put it simply, we cannot unburn something. 2. Cooking food. When we cook food, we apply heat, thereby causing chemical changes. Example. Raw dough become bread when it is baked in the oven. This happens because of the chemical reaction between the ingredients that produces a brown crust and a rich flavor. 
Another example is when we fry an egg. Chemical change occurs in the shape and structure of protein inside the egg when they are exposed to heat. These chemical changes caused by the changes in temperature create new substances with different properties, such as texture, color, and taste. Activity number two. Describe what happens to fresh chicken meat after it gets exposed to high temperature. Write your answer in your notebook. Minimizing harmful changes in materials. Kids, when you finish eating your snack or lunch, what do you do with the wrappers, peels, or leftover food? Do you throw them on the ground? Or do you put them in the trash bin? Did you know that putting waste in the trash can is a responsible action because it helps prevent harmful changes in the environment? You see, when we leave trash on the ground or everywhere, it can cause problems. It might attract pests and bacteria that will make people sick. It can also clog drainages and cause flooding when it rains. Simply, it can make a place dirty and unsafe. Another way to demonstrate responsible action is by recycling. Have you heard of recycling? It is like giving a second chance to some materials such as paper, glass, metal, or plastic before directly discarding them as waste. Instead of throwing these things away, we collect them in special bins for recyclable materials so they can be turned into new things. Scrap papers can be treated and reprocessed into useful papers again. Plastic and glass bottles can be reused in many ways. Recycling helps reduce the need to make new materials, which can save trees and keep the air clean. We should never burn our trash or waste materials in our backyards or anywhere else. Burning trash creates harmful smoke and bad odor that can damage our lungs and pollute the air we breathe. To deal with this problem, let us be like little environmental ambassadors or advocates. The first step is to talk to our friends and family about the negative effects of burning waste materials. We can explain to them that there are better ways to get rid of trash that will not harm the air we breathe. When it comes to reactive materials, we should always follow the rules and be extra careful. For example, we should never taste or touch reactive materials. They are not food, so we must avoid eating, tasting, or smelling them. Remember, kids, when we use cleaning products at home, we should read the instructions carefully and use them as directed. Some cleaning products can be reactive and might cause harm if not handled properly. Always ask an adult for help when dealing with these materials. We should only mix reactive materials in the right places, such as in a science laboratory at school or at home under the guidance of an adult. We should never mix reactive materials in the kitchen or play areas. Remember, taking care of our environment and handling reactive materials properly are important for making our everyday lives safe, healthy, and happy. As responsible caretakers of the earth, we must protect our planet and keep ourselves and other living things safe. Let us practice these responsible choices together and make the world a better place. Activity number three. In your notebook, draw a scenario that shows how to minimize harmful changes in materials. Write a short description of your drawing. Activity number four. In the Philippines, 
There is an anti-burning law called the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000, or Republic Act No. 9003. This law is all about taking care of the environment through proper waste management. One important provision of this law is to stop open burning. Read about this anti-burning law on the internet. Then, answer the following questions in your notebook. Study the diagram. From the information presented in the diagram, form sentences that state important things you have learned in this lesson. Write the sentences in your notebook. For your reflection, copy the table below in your notebook. Read each statement carefully. In the second column, write, yes if the statement is 100% true and you have no more questions, somewhat if you still have some questions or areas to review, or, not yet if you need further clarification or require more time to revisit the lesson.